The Indianapolis Colts really had a sleeper offseason that went under the radar, and I think this team is about to turn more heads in the upcoming season than you would think. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down some of the moves this team made over the last few months, and I'm of course going to be talking about Anthony Richardson because he has made many people super excited already, and we're just getting started with camp. Before I begin this video, I would really appreciate it if you would drop a like and subscribe. It only takes 5 seconds, plus you can always change your mind. Alright, so starting off, I definitely want to say that I know the Colts aren't going to win anything for a few years, but the point of this video is to show why they're on the right track and how some of the young players can impact this team as the core grows and learns together. Anthony Richardson is of course the new face of the franchise, and he was definitely the most polarizing player to come out of his class. I don't even really know how to describe it, but guys like him are just the people that you can't take your eyes off of when you're watching a game. At Florida, Richardson put up some pretty solid numbers with 17 touchdowns and over 2,500 yards, but he did throw 9 interceptions, and his main problem is sometimes not being very consistent. But his athleticism and ability to make jaw-dropping plays was the reason the Colts took him, and in my eyes, this was a high-risk pick, but very easily could have the highest reward, because he has as high of a ceiling as anyone to come out of the draft over the last few years. And if he struggles a little bit in Season 1, I don't think anyone should overreact, even though I know everyone will, because that's just what fans do. To me, I think Richardson's development is way more important than whatever the team's win-loss record will be. And also, this year is about seeing what guys should stick around for the long Long haul of the rebuild because the Colts definitely went out and made some acquisitions this offseason and I can't wait to see how some of these guys fit in with the system. Alright so starting off with the draft I already of course talked about their first round pick but in the second round they took Julius Brents who is a corner from Kansas State. The cornerback position was the team's biggest need outside of QB and Brents is a perfect fit for Gus Bradley's scheme. He's a physical lengthy defender and also follows the trend of this draft and that he's a great athlete. It's actually quite rare to see a 6'3 cornerback with the short area quickness that Brents has. He definitely has some work to do in terms of contesting some types of throws, but this was a great pick after trading back twice in the second round. In the third round of the draft, at pick 79, the Colts were able to steal Josh Downs from North Carolina, who is a great separator in the short passing game, and he has great hands. Really the only knock on him is that he's short and doesn't have much of a frame, but there's receivers like that throughout the league that are super successful, and I think if you give him time, he and Richardson are gonna develop great chemistry. After this, the Colts really just went on to fill some of the current needs they have with their late round picks in the draft, and hopefully one day one or two of those picks will become relevant players. Alright, moving on, now I want to talk more about the full receiving core that is going to be around Richardson this upcoming season, because I definitely think a lot of people sleep on this group, and depending on how quick they can gel with their new QB, I really am expecting some breakout seasons. First off, I want to talk about Michael Pittman Jr. because he's obviously going to be the wide receiver one and last season with Matt Ryan at QB, he almost put up in a thousand yard season and had four touchdowns. I've heard many people say that this is the year he's going to become a superstar and he really is an electric player so there's definitely a possibility of it happening. At the wide receiver 2 spot, it will be Alec Pierce, who really fits in with the timeline of this rebuild and that it's only his sophomore season, and last year, he played pretty well with 600 yards on 41 receptions. So the Colts really do have a lot of the assets to be a great team in the future, but right now, it's all about development and building up chemistry. This team really reminds me of where the Eagles were just over a year ago before they drafted Jalen Hurts, who of course became one of the best QBs in the league almost overnight. Real fast, before I end off this video, I want to talk about the defense because I really didn't cover anything about that side of the ball at all. So the defense is going to be led by DeForest Buckner, who in my opinion is their best player, and last season, Quiddy Pay and Dayo Odengbo combined for 11 sacks, and I expect them to both take even bigger leaps this season. One of the biggest problems for this defensive unit last season was at linebacker. Shaquille Leonard has been dominant over the last four seasons, but last year he struggled with a back injury over the course of the season, so he was pretty much on and off, and even though this squad doesn't have much experience depth around him, if he can stay healthy, that would be huge. I guess I really shouldn't have said the linebackers were one of the biggest problems because the guys playing beside them and behind them were just as bad. Kenny Moore has been with the Colts since 2017, but he had a really disappointing season last year. Across from him will probably be Julius Brent, who as I said earlier was just recently drafted and could be a project, but hopefully he could step in and leave a positive impact right away. 
Julian Blackman and Rodney Thomas will be the safeties this season, and they are both actually coming off of decent seasons, but they aren't anything that will change the trajectory of how this team will do. I would love to see this team take a few more guys in the upcoming drafts to fill some of the holes, and depending on how this season goes, they could even try to make a trade or two. So yeah, on defense, it may take a few years to build up and develop the young core, but if they can get things figured out alongside the offense, then I really like where things are headed. That's really all I have to say for this video. Thank you all so much if you made it to this point, and if you enjoyed and haven't yet, make sure to drop a like and subscribe because your support truly means the world. With training camp officially here, there is just so much to talk about across the league, so let me know what you guys would like to see next. And until then, I will see you all later.